Hello, happy Thursday. It's been a minute. I wanted to come and share um, a little bit what's going on, what happened, what's happening. You know, um, I had to have surgery on the 19th and that whole thing. Oh, it's, you can never be prepared for something like that. You just, you just can't. And I was so scared, but nobody knew it, right? And so um, got there um, Monday morning at 7, had to get checked in, had to go do blood work because when you have surgery, what you may or may not know, um, they take your blood, they, they, they check your blood to make sure um, you're compatible with, if you know, if to see what your blood type is just in case you might need a blood transfusion during surgery. It could happen. It's very possible. And so after that, I um, went upstairs to the surgery area and kind of waited until they um, called me. The system, because the computer system had went down, you know, that, that morning. It came up eventually before I went in for actual surgery, but it was like, <sighs> so when they called me, I was like, because <laughs> you know, me at doctor's office, you want people to call you so you can hurry and get out of there. But at, you know, when you're having surgery, it's like, oh, you can call me less. So anyway, they called me back. I went back there. Um, take everything off. Put that put that, that that famous gown on with the whole back out. Um, came in there. The nurse the nurse came in. Oh, excuse me. And she did, did the um started my IV because you know after that you know once you go into surgery they gotta give you stuff. So you know and the IV is the best place for it. You know to use to the best thing to use. And so we were talking and stuff. There were people coming in and out, um, very friendly. Doctors, nurses, you guys are very special people. If you don't know, I know you know that. You're very special people, and I appreciate all that you do. And so my doctor came in. Um, it was a person. He had a, he had two surgeries that day. One person was ahead of me, and so he was telling me some stuff he had to do. It would take an hour or so. I'm like, okay. And so um, then... It was that hour went by fast. So when he came back, he was like, all right, we're ready. And so the anesthesiologist, anesth whatever, you know what I'm talking about. He come in there, uh, he's talking to me and stuff, and he um, took some information and everything. And then my doctor was like, um, I'm pretty much going to talk to you, you know, later the next day because you're not going to remember anything. And I clearly did not. I remember them taking me into the operating room. That was it. That was lights out. And so I was told that the surgery was three hours. Surgery is supposed to be one hour, but it took three hours. And so visitating hour, visitation hours were over at 12. I had my mom go with me. You can only have one person go with you. And they could sit in the waiting room until you're done with surgery. But uh, uh, surgery took longer than we and we anticipated, right? So my mom was like, y'all know mamas. She was like, well, I ain't leaving here until I see my daughter. And so they had to roll me. This is what I was told. They had to roll me by the window, I guess, you know, because you had to go to the recovery room and stay there for such, such, such. It's a process. You got to go to the recovery room until you come out of it. And so they rolled me over there where she could see me and she felt better and she went home. And so after that, I remember waking up. I was in my room and I woke up and I remember looking around like that and and one of the nurses was like well hey and so i looked to my left and i had the most beautiful set of roses i've ever seen it was just really nice to see those roses and so um nurses will come in and people think just because you're in the hospital you're going to get the best rest you're not People are going to come in, poking, taking temperature, take, checking your blood pressure, giving you pills, asking you, poking you, looking at you. Can I look at it? Let me see it. Oh, it looks good. All throughout the night and day, like all day long. Um, And so the first day is like, you're just out of it. You really are. You're really out of it. You I, When I woke up, when I really, really woke up, it probably was like late that night and I was thirsty and wanted, wanted like a little snack or something. But you got to slowly introduce your body back to food. So I was on like a li liquid diet for like about two days. And so um, really just did a lot of just thirsty, just so thirsty, felt dehydrated. And then you got this IV pumping in you, got a catheter. When did they put that on? I guess right before surgery, you know, so all these things were just, I was like, oh my gosh. And so like day two was like, okay, so the doctor wants you to walk today. Do what? Who want to do that? 
somebody that want to go home. <laughs> you want to go home, you can get up and walk. I don't care how, how, how painful it is. So I was like, okay, I'm ready to walk. Um, so, um, I walked around, um, I think it was me and my, the nurse, maybe the first day, the first couple times, then my mom walk, walked with me a couple times. But, um, yeah, we walked around, um, walking down the hall, around the corner. That's all I had. I gave them all I got. And so that was just, cause think about it. You've been laying, you've been laying in this bed. My back was killing me. I guess laying on that table for so long. Um, getting up and walking, it felt like everything was going to fall out the bottom. But nevertheless, you have to do that. You know what I'm saying? And so I did that because I wanted to go home. It's like, you know, Wednesday, you can go home. And so, you know, Tuesday, I'm like, you know, Wednesday, I'm really walking. I'm like, you know, they took me off of the drip. The drip was, you know, if you're in pain, you hit that button and honey, you go to, you go to, you have the best sleep ever until they come and they poking on you. And so, um, like I said, that sec, that third day, I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm ready to go. I'm good. I've been walking around. I'm, I'm going to walk right now. You know, he's like, okay, so we'll see later this afternoon. So, um, he came in and we talked, but he didn't make a decision then. And then one of the other nurses came in. He was a traveling nurse. I was like, oh, this is neat. Traveling nurse came in. He's like, well, the doctor didn't say anything yet. So let me call and talk to him. So he called and talked to him. And I think he actually, I think my doctor actually came there and then they, they let me go. They, they released me. But he made me, he made me make an appointment, you know, to come to his office that Monday. Because they, you know, after surgery, they want to check you. So I had to go to his office like every week for the past two weeks for him to check, make sure everything was healing, doing what it's supposed to do. And the next, the last um, appointment is going to be to check the inside, right? And so that's next month. And so the whole, it's a, it's a process. It's a process. And you, you know, I can't, I couldn't drive. So people had to wait on me. I kind of liked it a little bit, right? So I'm just thankful for my mom and my honey because they were there. They were waiting on me. They were doing, you know, helping me and and getting whatever I wanted and needed. And I really appreciate that. I appreciate um, all the people that reached out to call and text me and check on me. There are people calling me like every day. I was like, oh. But when I was in the hospital, the first day, the phone was like over there. And I'm telling y'all, I was not going to move. <laughs> <laughs> right and I was out of it so the next day I'm like you know can you have me the phone because the phone had been ringing and then my cell phone was put up so I couldn't get that so I'm like you know really they wouldn't think about no phone one thing about talking to nobody I was thinking about this pain <laughs> you know what I'm saying I'm not moving because you got two little spots you know you got to lay on your back I'm not a back sleeper but I, I became a back sleeper and so it's a process it's a process and you um you just never know what life may throw at you you got to be prepared for it and um ready or not right why why just stay ready you got to stay ready because you just never know what like i said what life will throw you and i'm just so grateful and so thankful for all the supportive people in my circle and this just was reaching out and contacting me and just sending me so much love um uh, my, my church member sent me a little note saying get well and my aunt sent me some soup up there and i was like i was loving all the love i was loving all the love i really was and um i'm just so grateful and so thankful to um be where i am right now um the pain is i don't take the pain pills anymore because i don't need them um the worst thing is the gas the gas they pump your stomach with this gas. I guess they pump your stomach, not, not with gas, but they pump your stomach so they can do what they got to do in there, right? So after surgery, nobody told me this. The gas don't know where to go. <laughs> the gas is like, let me out of here. Let me out of here. But I don't know where to go. And so they were giving me these pills and stuff. I'm like, I'm taking these pills. But gas just, I feel like y'all making this gas have a party. And it don't know where to get out. And I don't want it to have a party because they don't know where to go. And so walking, they was like, walking will help with the gas. So I started walking, y'all. Oh, my God. It does help with the gas. And it's like your body got to get back regulated to do the things that it would it was normally doing, right? But the gas, the gas was the work. The gas to me was worse than the pain. You know, the pain is uncomfortable. It is. But that gas don't know where to go. 
child, I digress. The gas, the gas, the gas. So I'm laughing at it now because it's gotten so much better. It, it, it knows where to go. I'm not afraid to push, right? That's, that's the other part. When they cut your stomach, you scared to push. Because you like something about to pop out. I don't need to pop out. So I'm not going to push. And um, so, like I said, I'm so grateful and so thankful to be to be healing. Um, it's, it's a process. It's a process. It's a journey. And I'm just so grateful and so thankful that everything turned out good. I trust God. I prayed. I was scared, too. Now, I'm not going to lie. I was scared. But everything turned out good. And I'm healing and I'm so much better than I was. I've lost a little pound. My stomach don't went down a little bit. Can't tell me nothing. But anyway, I feel so much better. And I'm just so grateful and thankful to um, that everything went the way it went. I'm thankful for everybody that, that helped me, that encouraged me, that checked on me, that sent me love, texts, comments. You know, I'm so grateful and so thankful for each and every one of you. And I just wanted to come on here and share a little snip of um, what has happened the past couple weeks. The journey, I'm still on the journey of healing. And I am just so grateful and so thankful um, of everything and everybody that's in my life. And so a big kiss to everybody, a big virtual hug to everybody. So I got some more stuff to talk about, but I'm going to cut it because it's like almost 12 minutes. I wanted to be about 10. I got some more stuff to share because it's, oh my goodness, it's a journey. But anyway, I'm going to cut it right here. Um, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, Until next time, peace, love, and blessings.